Over the course of five centuries, the Greater Terran Union transitioned from a devastated civilization struggling to take its first few steps past the boundaries of the solar system to an interstellar hyperpower that would shape the fate of the entire galaxy. With the story of the Greater Terran Union and the first season of Stellaris Invicta now over, it seems appropriate to look back on the series and figure out what worked, what didn't, and what we can use to make season two even better, a type of post-mortem if you will. So first, for the benefit of anyone confused as to what Stellaris Invicta actually was, let's review. The basic premise was that the Templin Institute would embark on a campaign within the game Stellaris, which would then be streamed over on our Twitch channel. As voted by our supporters on Patreon, the focus of this campaign was the Greater Terran Union. Roughly once a month we would produce a scripted, documentary-style episode covering what happened. I think in delivering on this idea we were largely successful. It took 34 streams and 10 episodes, including a prologue and epilogue, but we finished both the campaign and the story. This might sound kind of straightforward, but having never attempted anything like this before, and being aware that there was a ton that could potentially go wrong, just the fact we managed to finish without any major setbacks is a huge victory. So what else went right with Stellaris Invicta? Well, I think the biggest success we managed was the Greater Terran Union itself. When we first announced the choices that would be available for our patrons to vote on, there was only a few paragraphs worth of backstory for each nation. Expanding upon those sparse details to create a much more fleshed out system of government, society, culture, and history was a unique challenge. Having seen the immense support for the GTU across our streams and here on YouTube, it really seems like we created a unique faction that appealed to a lot of people. It has been incredibly gratifying to see the Greater Terran Union mentioned along the likes of the Galactic Empire or the Imperium of Man. I'm so happy that people really took to it. There's a lot of factors as to why I think that was, but one that stands out is of the four original choices, the Greater Terran Union was the only one that had a sort of built-in story. While the other nations were presented as simply going into space, the GTU had a purpose, finding the alien species that had previously invaded the Earth and delivering some form of retribution. I think in Season 2 we'll try to expand on this and give each potential nation more direction. The second major thing I think we got right with Stellaris Invicta was figuring out how to take upwards of 8 hours worth of streaming time and convert it into a 10 or 15 minute episode. We couldn't possibly include every single detail, and figuring out what to include and what to omit was another major challenge. One of the first choices we had to make, for example, involved the discovery of a planet that would eventually become the GTU colony of Elysium. Within the game, it was first inhabited by a primitive alien race, which was then annihilated by a vastly superior civilization through a series of triggered events. It was a little convoluted and, because of the nature of the game, wouldn't have any meaningful impact on the GTU once it was over. It didn't quite fit the character or the narrative we were going for, and it was never mentioned in our episodes. Every stream had a bunch of events like this, but I think for the most part, in each subsequent episode, we were able to deliver a fairly accurate representation of what occurred. We're interested to hear your feedback though. Was there something from a stream that you wished had been mentioned? Now, one of the biggest problems posed with the series is that within the scripted episodes, we frequently mention things that either aren't really covered in the game, or don't really look visually engaging. Things like ground warfare, political developments, and the more nuanced elements of an interstellar society. For this, we were fortunate enough to be given permission to use the work of a bunch of talented artists. The series would not have been anywhere as successful without their generosity. Alright, so enough of the self-congratulation, what are some things that didn't work out in Stellaris Invicta? The most obvious answer is we severely underestimated both the potential of this method of storytelling and the interest it would garner from our audience. The original plan for the series was just two episodes, one covering the overview of the nation and one covering the events of the game. Looking back, that now seems insane, and thankfully we were able to expand the scope of the series without too much of a headache. The other part of this though was the way we handled alien submissions. When we first announced Alaris Invicta, we included a template that anyone could fill out with their own design for an alien empire, and then email it to us for a chance to have it included in the game. We expected a few dozen submissions, but instead got well over 800. We had no real system in place to sort through all these submissions, and instead just had to put in a lot of time. 
Next season, we'll be limiting alien submissions, but how exactly, we still need to figure that out. Another thing we could have improved on was something we saw mentioned again and again in the comments, and that was maps. Because we limited each episode to artwork or gameplay footage, it was sometimes hard to understand where exactly things were taking place, which alien nation was which, and how it all related to one another, especially if you hadn't caught any of the streams. Now, the reason we didn't include maps was because I wasn't totally happy with how they looked in-game, and the names of star systems and other elements were often changed over the course of our campaign. In Episode 3, I actually made a map from scratch in Photoshop, but keeping it updated over the course of the game and continually adding on new regions as the GTU expanded proved impossible. I'm not sure what the solution is here yet, whether just relenting and including in-game map views, or spending a lot of time recreating the entire galaxy in Photoshop. The last thing I wasn't totally happy with in Stellaris Invicta was our limitations when it came to footage. While we had a ton of room to work with across both our captured gameplay footage and donated artwork, we still sometimes had to use the same images across multiple episodes to depict different events. We tried to keep this to a minimum, but sometimes it was unavoidable. We also were unable to depict any type of change across the GTU as the series went on. The capital of the nation looked identical in both the year 2200 and 2600. Sadly, without a budget of a few million dollars and an army of artists we can commission, there is likely no way around this. So that's what I took away from Stellaris Invicta. But before we wrap things up, I'd like to mention a few other brief points. First, we were able to produce 10 episodes of Stellaris Invicta because of the support of our patrons and our members here on YouTube. If you enjoyed Stellaris Invicta and want to see a second season, consider supporting us. Depending on your pledge level, you'll get some cool gear out of it. Also, during our streams on Twitch, we produced a series of radio advertisements for products and services available within the Greater Terran Union. These will be released on the Templin Archives channel over the next few months, and the first one is available right now. If you'd like to hear all about preaky plushy toys or watch some of our past streams, you'll find both on the archives. Lastly, if you'd like to discuss the GTU or Stellaris Invicta further, or just speculate on what's happening with Season 2, head on over to our Discord server. We have a great community there, and we'd love to have you along. So, I think Stellaris Invicta Season 1 went pretty well, but that is just my opinion. An unshakable zeppelin of truth flying above the clouds and currents of deceit. I'd still like to hear your opinion, though. Have any suggestions on how we can improve for Season 2? Was there something about the series I completely forgot to mention? Will we ever find out what happened to the Mist Man? Let us know in the comments below. Until next time, this has been Incoming. The Templin Institute investigates alternate worlds and realities. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to directly support us, vote in polls to determine future topics, and receive some cool rewards, please consider pledging to our Patreon page.